Hello, everyone. Welcome to a Clear Perspective. I'm Serene Lee. Recently, the pandemic has gone seriously out of control in India. The triple mutant coronavirus variant seems to specifically target young people. People are dying too quickly, and many of the infected bodies were cremated immediately. There are plenty of people around the world who hope that the vaccines would bring everything back to normal. But there are controversies on the vaccines, such as how effective they are and if the side effects are worth it. Many people are finding it hard to make a decision on whether they should get vaccinated. And if they do, which one should they choose? Let's talk about it from a few different angles. Vivek is a well-known comedian and a film actor in India. He died one day after getting vaccinated. What's ironic is that he was India's health ambassador and campaigned for the benefits of vaccination. On April 15th, he publicly received a dose of Covaxin, a vaccine manufactured in India, and urged people to get it. Barrett Biotech is the company that produced the Covaxin. In March, Barrett Biotech published the results showing that Covaxin is 81% effective and that it provided immunity against the rapidly emerging variants. After receiving the vaccine, Vivet told the media, Many have doubts about vaccination and its side effects. There are also several rumors doing the rounds. I want to put an end to old rumors. I want to show people that there is no danger in getting vaccinated. But within a day, Vivek suffered from a cardiac arrest and died at age 59. His death angered many Indians. People are questioning whether his death was related to the vaccine. But authorities announced that his death had nothing to do with the vaccine. What's the real reason behind his death? I believe the truth will eventually be revealed. There are more than a dozen vaccines available worldwide. A dozen more new vaccines are going through phase 2 and phase 3 testing. We are not experts, so it is really hard for us to tell which ones are better. We can only make observations through the data. There are more than 70 side effects listed on the menu of the Sinopharm vaccine developed in China. According to the National Health Commission of the People's Republic of China, more than 190 million doses had been administered as of April 19th. In China, there have been no official announcements on the number of deaths caused by the vaccine. But through unofficial channels, stories on side effects and deaths after getting vaccinated have been spreading rapidly. A person in Nanjing City was held in a detention center for seven days after posting a short video of a person who died after receiving the vaccine. According to reports from Hong Kong, where information is relatively transparent, 24 people have died after receiving the vaccine. 20 received the Made in China Sinovac vaccine, and the four received the Pfizer vaccine. Although officials stressed that the preliminary investigations showed there was no relation between their deaths and the vaccine. However, it seems difficult to justify this claim. In addition to the side effects of the vaccine, there are questions about the effectiveness of the vaccine. Chile, with a population of about 19 million, began a vaccination program last December, and 90% of the vaccinations were Chinese Sinovac vaccines. But over the past two months, the number of confirmed cases in Chile has been climbing daily, with the diagnosis rate rising by 35% and a total of more than 2.84 million cases. Last Friday, Chilean authorities released the results of a study on 10.5 million people. The report showed the effectiveness of a single shot of the Sinovac vaccine against coronavirus infection was only 16%, but the effectiveness rate increased to 67% after two shots. The former president of Peru, Martin Vizcarra, and his wife received the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine in October 2020, but he and his wife were both tested positive this month.
Pakistan has been using the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine since early February and is currently experiencing a third wave of outbreaks. Pakistan's President Arif Albi and the Prime Minister Amran Khan have both tested positive for the virus after receiving the Chinese vaccine. In Brazil and other countries using the Chinese vaccine, the number of confirmed cases is increasing rather than decreasing. This is the case with the Chinese vaccine. Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson are the four main vaccines available. Let's take a look at them. According to the European Medicines Agency EMA, unusual blood clots with low blood platelets should be listed as very rare side effects of AstraZeneca. Most of the cases reported have occurred in women under 60 years of age within two weeks of vaccination. France recommended AstraZeneca for over 55s only. Italy and Spain recommend that only people aged 60 or older receive the AstraZeneca vaccine. In the UK, people under 30 are to be offered an alternative COVID vaccine to the AstraZeneca jab due to the evidence linking it to rare blood clots. Some Canadian provinces also recommend the AstraZeneca vaccine for people over the age of 40. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was also posed by the FDA earlier this month because of its link to six cases of a rare and a severe type of blood clot. Trump criticized the political and the economic motive behind the promotion of the Pfizer vaccine. On April 23rd, FDA and the CDC lifted the polls on Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine after thorough safety review, and instead they recommended the vaccine's known and the potential benefits outweigh its known and the potential risks in individuals 18 years of age and older. Based on clinical trials, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was 85.9% effective against the severe forms of the virus and is 66.1% effective at preventing moderate to severe cases, while Pfizer's reported 95% effectiveness. Based on this data, it seems that the Pfizer vaccine is the best. However, after several issues were discovered with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the AstraZeneca vaccine, the national file reported on April 22nd. Pfizer coronavirus vaccine may have long-term health effects not previously disclosed, including ALS, Alzheimer's, and other neurological degenerative diseases. Some say these so-called studies are not credible. They are propaganda to dominate the market and attack each other. If this is the case, we can only analyze it by looking at the data. Let's take a look at the set of data collected by Sputnik. Of the four most popular vaccines, Pfizer has the highest number of doses administered, followed by Moderna and AstraZeneca. Let's look at the reported number of deaths after vaccination. This is based on official statistics from 13 countries as of April 19, 2021, including the United States, India, Brazil, Argentina, Spain, Chile, France, Germany, the United Kingdom, Austria, Italy, Denmark, and Russia. Pfizer had 2,485 deaths, which is three to five times the number of deaths from AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. For the fatality rate per million of those four vaccines, Pfizer is 39.4, Moderna is 20.2, AstraZeneca is 12.8, and Johnson & Johnson is 7.5. The worst Pfizer deaths occurred in Norway, where the number of deaths per million administered doses was 143. According to the CDC Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, 1,134 people in the United States died after receiving Pfizer vaccine. This is more than 20 times higher than the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. There are indeed many questions regarding the Pfizer vaccine. Early this year, French publication Le Mans reported major issues with approving Pfizer by the European Medicines Agency. 
The allegation was made based on leaked documents from the EMA. According to the documents between the clinical and the mass production stage, the degree of RNA integrity dropped from 81% to 59% on average. Although the EMA was aware of the problems with Pfizer, emails from EMA Executive Deputy Director indicated that they have been pushing for simultaneous expedited approval of the vaccine by the European Medicines Agency and the US Food and Drug Administration. It seems that in today's day and day, vaccines are no longer a device used to save lives, but also a tool driven by politics and profit. What's special about vaccines is that only experts are able to have a say on it. Currently, the FDA and the EMA have been mainly pushing the Pfizer vaccines. AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson have been put on hold by government agencies, but they haven't been banned. Pfizer is projected to sell 15 billion worth of vaccines, a fourth of the company's total profit this year. What's more, if there is a mutation that the current vaccine doesn't cover, more shots will need to be administered, creating more profit. We all know that vaccination doesn't necessarily stop the infection. On April 15, the CDC released data on the number of people infected after being fully vaccinated. According to CNN, the CDC reported that approximately 77 million people in the U.S. have been fully vaccinated. 5,800 of those who received the vaccine were infected. Of the 5,800 people, 396 of the infected required hospitalization, and there were 74 deaths. A few weeks ago, the CDC had claimed that vaccinated people could still transmit the virus to others. However, now they are saying that vaccinated people can safely interact with non-vaccinated people. Their story seems to keep changing. There doesn't seem to be a consensus on how long it takes for the vaccine to take effect after receiving it, and it is likely that people will be receiving their third and fourth doses. After each mutation, new vaccines will be rolled out, continuing this endless cycle. If the experts are to be trusted, this is what science has determined to be the safest path forward. However, if the experts aren't credible, it is hard to say which parts of the narrative are politically motivated. Having said all that, please make your own judgment on whether the vaccine is safe with the information given. Lastly, we would like to remind our viewers again that our platform may be restricted on social media. We would like to recommend the Umaker platform to everyone. Our videos are available on Umaker. Please subscribe and we hope to see you there. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.